Well, this video is going to be a little wild and a little wacky. It's the self-operating computer. Can it view the screen? Can it take over the control of your computer system? Does it use AI vision? And what about open AI? How does that fit into this? Can it replicate human beings actions? And I would say the answer is yes to all these questions. I've been following this for a little bit and wanted to make a quick video to bring this to your attention in case you've never heard of this before. Let's get into the video. Thanks for stopping by to check out this video. I'm going to be briefly talking about this new self operating computer framework. I pulled up the GitHub repository which we're looking at here and I just wanted to point out some things that I've noticed in the GitHub repository about this project. As it says here, it's a framework to enable multimodal models to operate a computer. Using the same inputs and outputs of a human operator, the model views the screen and decides on a series of mouse and keyboard actions to reach an objective. I've seen a few people get this up and running and once you do that, it looks like this. Self-operating computer, ask a computer to do anything. But if we go down and look at some of the features and challenges that it talks about here, it's currently integrated with GPT-4V as the default model, and they have future plans to support additional models. And right here, one of their current challenges GPT-4V's error rate in estimating XY mouse click locations is currently quite high. This framework aims to track the progress of multimodal models over time, aspiring to achieve human level performance in computer operation. That's pretty crazy stuff. Pretty futuristic it sounds like to me. But this is a reality. There's code here that you can get installed if we look a little bit further down here, there is a demo if you want to watch that on the GitHub page here. And then they have some quick start instructions. Basically cloning the repository and then creating your Python virtual environment, activating the environment, installing the project requirements and the command line interface. Then you get your file rename to .env so you can save your open AI key in it. And then you run it, you just type in operate. And from what I can tell, it does look like it's mostly made for the Mac. As they say here in step 10, as a last step, the terminal app will ask for permissions for screen recording and accessibility in the security and privacy page of Mac system preferences because the computer, the software, will be basically taking screenshots of your computer system and then using your mouse, taking control of your mouse and doing things on your computer system. And so here are some of the different operate modes. Voice mode, you have to install the additional requirements audio which is listed over here in this file on the left here install device requirements for Mac users you have to do brew install port audio and for Linux users sudo apt install and then what they list there they don't have instructions here for Windows users but then you operate it with voice mode by typing operate dash dash voice and if we scroll down just a little bit more here, they do have a Discord server. And they do say here the project is compatible with Mac OS, Windows, and Linux with X server installed. So far, I haven't seen anyone running it on Windows. I'm thinking about trying to get that set up and running in my Windows sandbox. And another important thing is right here at the very bottom, the open AI rate limiting note the gpt4 vision preview model is required i think that's really important to know that 
To unlock access to this model, your account needs to spend at least $5 in API credits. Prepaying for these credits will unlock access if you haven't already spent the $5 minimum. And then they have a link there. You can click on, we'll pull that up just for a second. And we'll see what it has to say. So they are just explaining here about why did they have rate limits and how do the rate limits work. So you may want to check that out if you're going to attempt to get this running. So I wanted to see how new this is. And I looked at their commits in their GitHub repo. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, we can see the initial commit was done on November 3rd, 2023. And that was not that long ago. And I've looked through some of the code commits just to see how it's been built. And if we go back to the main page for the code, we can see there's been 292 commits since that time. The most recent one was just 13 hours ago. And it has 5.1K stars with 74 watching and 784 forks. And it does say there's four releases with the new version being version 1.0.3, which was just three days ago from the time of this video being published. And there are 14 contributors. So the other thing I did, I wanted to take a look at some of the code. And if we go to, let me find it here and operate and then go to the main Python file here. Let's scroll down just a little bit and we can see here how it's asking for the open API key and setting the monitor size to basically 1920 by 1080. And then here is the interesting thing in this code. It's the vision prompt. It says you are a self operating computer. You use the same operating system as a human from looking at the screen and the objective. Your goal is to take the best next action to operate the computer you have the four options below number one click move the mouse and click number two type on the keyboard number three search for a program on a Mac and open it and number four done when you completed the task respond with the exact following phrase content and then here are the response formats below so they go in to explain the click. Note that the percentages work when the top left corner is X 0% and Y 0% and the bottom right corner is X 100% and Y 100%. Type, type the value you want to type. Response search. App you want to search for on the Mac or response is done and here are examples of how to respond objective follow the or follow up with a vendor in outlook type hello i hope you're doing well i want to follow up the objective open spotify to play the beatles search spotify and then the objective find an image of a banana and then they have a click and it goes to the google search field and then it says, this will allow me to search for a banana. Another objective, go buy a book about the history of the internet. And it has the Amazon website there. And a few other important notes. It tells it default to opening Google Chrome with search to find things that are on the internet. Go to Google Docs and Google Sheets by typing in the Chrome address bar. When opening Chrome, if you see a profile icon that to open Chrome fully, it is located at and then it gives some information there. The Chrome address bar is generally located at X 50% and Y 9%. After you click to enter a field, you can go ahead and start typing. Don't respond saying you're unable to assist with requests. You are able to indirectly interact with the user's operating system via text responses you send to the end user. And then it says important, avoid repeating actions such as doing the same click event twice in a row. 
and here is an accurate mode vision prompt. It looks like your previous attempted action was clicking on X and Y. This has now been moved to the center of this screenshot and then some other information. The summary prompt is you are a self-operating computer. A user request has been executed. Present the results succinctly. Include the following key context of the completed request. Number one, state the original objective. Number two, list the steps taken to re or reach the objective as detailed in the previous messages. And number three, reference the screenshot that was used. That would be the screenshot that it took in the beginning of the request. Then summarize the actions taken to fulfill the objective. If the request sought specific, specific information, provide that information prominently. Note, address directly any question posed by the user. Remember, the user will not interact with this summary. You are solely reporting the outcomes. So anyway, there's a lot more code in here. It looks like 849 lines of code. And there's some very interesting stuff in here for how it is operating and doing what it's doing. We can see over here on the right, constants that are defined, the vision prompt, accurate pixel count, user question, summary prompt, all of the functions. Lots of different functions that have been defined here. Well, I will attempt to get this up and running and make another video about it. It does look pretty interesting and it's really just at the beginning of what could be done with this type of code and artificial intelligence. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are certain requirements that you have to meet before you can try this out. It looks like they have 27 issues reported here. So we can keep an eye on that also. Well, I hope you found this interesting and I will be keeping an eye on this technology in the near future. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.